If you've had breast cancer, you may have been told about the receptors. I'm sure you've heard about the ER, PR and HER2 receptors. These are the estrogen receptors, progesterone receptors and human epidermal growth factor 2 receptors. Sometimes these receptors can be positive, sometimes negative. But what does this all mean and why does it even matter? Stay tuned to find out. Hi, my name is Tasha Gandamihaja, here to help you navigate the world of health in general and breast health specifically. Receptors can be likened to docking stations situated either within the cell or on the surface of the cell that receive signals which in turn can affect different types of changes within that cell. So let's talk about estrogen receptors or ER. These receptors respond to the hormone estrogen, which is naturally produced in the body. When breast cancer cells have these receptors, they're termed estrogen receptor positive or ER positive. How about progesterone receptors? Well, like estrogen receptors, progesterone receptors respond to hormones, specifically the progesterone hormone. And so when breast cancer cells have these progesterone receptors, they're labeled as progesterone receptor positive or PR positive. HER2 is a protein that can promote the growth of cancer cells. When breast cancer cells have too many HER2 receptors, they are called HER2 positive. The incidence rates of hormone receptor positive and hormone receptor negative breast cancers vary significantly. Hormone receptor positive breast cancer is the most common subtype, accounting for approximately 60 to 75% of all breast cancer cases. It is more common in postmenopausal women, although it can also occur in premenopausal women and men. And they tend to occur at an older age compared to other subtypes. The risk factors for hormone receptor positive breast cancer include factors associated with hormonal exposure, such as early menarche, late menopause, HRT, and obesity. Let's talk about hormone receptor negative breast cancer. Hormone receptor negative breast cancer refers to breast cancers that lack both the estrogen receptors, ER, and progesterone receptors, PR, and accounts for approximately 25 to 40% of all breast cancer cases. These receptor negative breast cancers can occur at any age, but it tends to be diagnosed at a younger age compared to hormone receptor positive subtypes. Risk factors for hormone receptor negative breast cancer may differ from those associated with hormone receptor positive disease. For example, a triple negative breast cancer, where the ER, PR and the HER2 are all negative, is more prevalent in uh, women of African descent and those with a BRCA1 gene mutation. So why is understanding the status of these receptors important? Well, it is important because it guides treatment decision making. It helps oncologists tailor therapies to target the specific characteristics of the cancer and therefore improving chances of successful treatment. So what is the impact of treatment? Well, for ER and or PR positive breast cancers, not only surgery, but hormone therapy is a cornerstone of treatment. These therapies work by blocking the effects of estrogen and or progesterone, starving the cancer cells of the hormones they need to grow. Common therapies include tamoxifen, aromatase inhibitors such as letrozole, and selective estrogen receptor degraders, also known as SERDs. Tamoxifen is one of the most commonly used hormone therapies for breast cancer. It's known as a selective estrogen receptor modulator, or SERM. Tamoxifen binds to the estrogen receptors on the breast cancer cells. So instead of activating the receptors like estrogen would, tamoxifen actually blocks them. And this prevents estrogen from binding to the receptors and stimulating the growth of cancer cells. Aromatase inhibitors, such as letrozole, work by blocking the enzyme aromatase, which is responsible for converting other hormones to estrogen. As a result, this reduces the amount of estrogen circulating in the body, starving hormone receptor positive breast cancer cells of the hormone they need to grow. Unlike tamoxifen, which blocks estrogen receptors, aromatase inhibitors reduce the production of estrogen in postmenopausal women. Fulvestrant is a different type of hormone therapy 
known as a selective estrogen receptor degrader or SERD. It works by binding to the estrogen receptors and targeting them for destruction within the cancer cell. By degrading the estrogen receptors, fulvestrant effectively blocks estrogen signaling and inhibits cancer cell growth. These treatments can significantly improve outcomes, reducing the risk of cancer recurrence and prolonging survival. So what are the side effects? While endocrine therapies are generally well tolerated, they can cause side effects due to their effects on hormone levels in the body. Common side effects may include hot flashes, vaginal dryness, mood changes, as well as joint pains. Additionally, some women may experience an increased risk of osteoporosis with long-term use of aromatase inhibitors such as letrozole. Now, how about HER2-positive breast cancer? HER2-positive breast cancer tends to be more aggressive. However, targeted therapies like Aceptin, Pregeta, and Cadsila have revolutionized treatment options. These drugs specifically attack the HER2 protein, slowing or halting the growth of cancer cells. So how does Herceptin work? Herceptin, also known as Trastuzumab, is a targeted therapy specifically designed to inhibit the activity of HER2 receptors in breast cancer cells. HER2-positive breast cancers have an overexpression of HER2 receptors, which can then lead to uncontrolled cell growth and proliferation. And Herceptin works by binding to these HER2 receptors, effectively blocking their signaling pathways and inhibiting cell growth that way. Herceptin also stimulates the body immune system to attack HER2-positive cancer cells. This immune-mediated response helps to further suppress cancer growth and may enhance the effectiveness of treatment. While Herceptin has been a game-changer in the treatment of HER2-positive breast cancer, researchers have found that combining it with other targeted therapies can further improve treatment outcomes. And pertuzumab is one such drug that is often used in conjunction with Herceptin, and this is the reason why. It's called dual HER2 blockade. Pertuzumab is a monoclonal antibody that also targets HER2 receptors, but it works through a different mechanism than Herceptin. By combining Herceptin with pertuzumab, clinicians can achieve a dual blockade of HER2 signaling pathways, effectively shutting down two key pathways involved in cancer cell growth. Studies have shown that the combination of these two drugs have a synergistic effect, meaning that their combined action is greater than the sum of their individual effects. And clinical trials have demonstrated that combining Herceptin with pertuzumab along with chemotherapy significantly improves treatment response rates and prolongs progression-free survival in patients with HER2-positive breast cancer. The addition of pertuzumab to Herceptin-based regimens has become a standard of care for HER2-positive breast cancer, both in the adjuvant and metastatic setting. Now, let's look at triple negative breast cancer. Triple negative breast cancer lacks all three receptors, ER, PR, and HER2. And since hormone therapies and HER2 targeted drugs are ineffective, treatment options for triple negative breast cancer are more limited. Chemotherapy remains the primary systemic treatment for triple negative breast cancer. And this may involve the use of multiple chemotherapy drugs in combination, such as anthracyclines like doxorubicin and taxanes like paclitaxel. Neoadjuvant chemotherapy given before surgery may be recommended to shrink the tumor and improve surgical outcomes. And adjuvant chemotherapy may also be administered after surgery to reduce the risk of cancer recurrence. Immune checkpoint inhibitors such as pembrolizumab and atezolizumab have shown promise in the treatment of metastatic triple negative breast cancer. And these drugs work by harnessing the body's immune system to target and destroy cancer cells. And I've made a video specifically looking at triple negative breast cancer, and I will leave the link below if you want to check it out. So how about outcomes? Overall, hormone receptor positive breast cancers have a better prognosis compared to other subtypes. With the availability of effective hormone therapies, many patients with hormone receptor positive breast cancer achieve long-term survival and have a lower risk of recurrence. HER2 positive breast cancer used to be associated with a poorer prognosis 
due to its aggressive nature. However, the introduction of targeted therapies like Aceptin has significantly improved outcomes for these patients. With the use of Herceptin-based regimens, many HER2 positive breast cancer patients now achieve long-term remission and have improved survival rates. Triple negative breast cancer is typically more aggressive and associated with poorer outcomes compared to other subtypes. Treatment options for triple negative breast cancer are more limited and recurrence rates can be higher, particularly in the first few years following diagnosis. However, Ongoing research into novel treatment approaches, including immunotherapy, holds promise for improving outcomes for triple negative breast cancer patients in the future. I hope this has been helpful. Let me know in the comment section below and I will see you in the next one.